Hi, today we're going to be looking at some farm machinery and what we have here is a control box for a McHale 998 square bale wrapper. Now this belongs to a farmer friend and he said it was left out in the rain and got wet and now it no longer lights up. It takes 12 volts input here and it, when you apply 12 volts you should get something on the screen but that's not happening. So what I'll do, I'll hook the bench power supply up and we'll see what it's doing. So I've got the bench power supply set to 13 volts. So we'll just double check that. 12.99, close enough. Right, so the blue is the negative and the brown is the positive. So that's it, got power, and indeed it isn't doing anything. Right, let's see how it comes apart, then I'll just switch this bench power supply off for now. I think he did mention that he'd already tried to take the top off and it broke the plastic here. So let's start by the bottom, and it looks like I've got about six screws. Just around the outside here. Right, so I'm going to start by removing those. Right, so that's all of the screws removed from this side of it. Let's have a look at the other side now. There's only five screws on this side. Right, so that's all the screws out. So how does this come apart then? So looking down here, it looks like this top panel sort of slides out. There we go. Right. Let's have a look at this board. Then. Oh, right. I can see some of the problems already. Right, I'll just try and get this to one side, this big thick wire. And then we'll just zoom down a bit. I don't know if you can spot anything already. see signs of corrosion I'll just find something to point with so it looks like there's some corrosion around about here and here and around about there I'll just move this board along a little bit I see some signs of corrosion on these chips here a little bit there possibly a little bit around this area I'm not sure that battery a bit past its best as well. Uh, let's see if we can unplug this board. So I'll unplug that. That's the little emergency stop button. This is where the power comes in. And looks like I've got a big connector here. Right, let's remove these six screws. I'll just zoom out a fraction. Right, let's see if this will separate from this lower board. Looks like we've got a display connector and a keypad connector. Just try and separate the display one here. There we go. Well, those bottom boards don't look too bad. It looks a little bit, a little bit corrosion just around the connector here, or a little bit, a little bit corrosion there, but nothing too bad. It looks like the emergency stop button has been hit too hard and broken away from the plastic here as well maybe to sort something with that as well I'll see if we can get a little bit creative a bit later with that one so the guy who owns it lent it to someone else and it was actually them that left it out in the rain so Right, I'll see if I can find a toothbrush and some IPA and we'll try cleaning up round here. Let's just zoom down a little bit more. Let's have a look. Looks like there's some pins around this. Looks like an apron, 
possibly. Yeah, that looks like a RAM chip, and this looks like an EEPROM. So I suppose if there was bad connections round here, which it indeed looks like there is, then that would stop the processor from booting and you wouldn't see anything on the screen. So that's what the problem might be. I mean, we'll clean up all these areas around here as well and we'll see what voltage is in that battery, but I'm not holding out a lot of hope for having any voltage in that battery. I mean, the rest of it doesn't actually look too bad. I've seen a lot worse that I've managed to recover, so I'm quite hopeful with this one. Yeah, it's a bit, definitely a bit corrosion on this battery here. Looks like that battery's leaked. We'll clean it up and we'll have a look and we'll see how we'll get on. Right, I'll go and grab a toothbrush and some IPA or isopropyl alcohol. Back with some IPA and a toothbrush. Well, it looks like that track. Uh, I might be wrong. No, I think that track's alright. I thought that track might have actually rotted off, but it looks okay. Let's use a cotton bud to try and clean up anything, any residue that's left. I mean, this side of the board doesn't actually look too bad. I'm just not sure about that track there. Anyway, I'll just get the test meter. I'll just check that one. Let's see if I can get the meter in shot yet. You can see I was zoomed in, I am. I I'll have to zoom out a little bit on this just to get the meter in shot. Seems okay that one. Let's sort of check while we're here. I'm just gonna try and get rid of some of this residue that's dried up now. Alright, let's start having a look at this bit. So I guess these must be the MOSFETs for controlling the hydraulic solenoids. Because most of these farm machines use hydraulics. And they've usually got electronic solenoids that actuate the that let the fluid go through to move the hydraulic rams. This definitely looks like the control section. discoloration on the leg on that IC there, I'm not sure what the IC is. Right, now I'm not sure if I've got an extractor tool for one of these. Right, there we go, one PLCC extractor tool. Now I've never used this before, it came with my little EEPROM programmer. So let's see. Oh, it is moving a bit. Go. Yes, yeah, so I think that's the cause of the problem. I'll just zoom down a fraction, see if we can. Yeah, I think that's the problem there. There'll be bad connections on these legs, so it wouldn't be to read the apron properly. Right, I'm going to spray this with some contact cleaner and I'm going to rub it on a piece of paper to try and clean these contacts up. Right, just got a bit of copying paper here. I'm just going to spray some contact cleaner on here. And then go with the direction that the legs are facing. Yeah, look at that. This is the side that's that's dirty. It is starting to clean up. Just might try this with a little grinding pen, just ever so lightly. Right, I'll just get a fresh piece of piece of paper and I'll just give those another clean with the switch cleaner. I don't know whether it's just try and retin these slightly. 
I'm sure it'll be fine. Possibly a little bit of a dull one there. Let's give this side a bit more of a clean. I think that'll do for that. Let's have a look at this socket now. Maybe a bit more of an issue to try and clean the socket. Uh, I'll try some switch cleaner. And I'll try a cotton board as uh, Try a toothbrush in there, see if we can. Let's see if I can zoom down a bit more. Get the camera to focus in. I mean, I could get a new one of these sockets. Looks like you've got to heat the underneath of the board to fit them though, because you obviously can't heat it up from the top because it will just melt it. I'll try cleaning it up first and see how we get on. Most of these contacts look quite dirty. Yeah, it looks more this one, doesn't it? Let's try switching this on and just see if we can get I think that'll do for that one. Let's see what these other ones are like. Well, I definitely see there's two there. Let's see if I can get the same treatment on those two. I mean, I'm hardly touching with the grinding pen on these, I'm just literally just like a feather touch on them. Right, what's these ones like? Ones look okay. And those ones look okay. Might be a little bit just on this end pin here, it's just hard to get it in for shot there. I mean it looks a lot better than when we started so hopefully that might be it. Let's see if we've got any voltage in this battery. I'll just zoom out a fraction so I can get the meter and shot. He's just dead. Right, so this needs a new battery. Right. I'm going to have a look, see if I can find a replacement battery for this. So it's a safety LST 14250, 3.6 volt. Right, I've ordered a new battery for it. I think it was £5.79 or so. Right, let's get this EEPROM put back in. Right, that's it. Get those out of the way. So I think that's all we can do with this part now until the new battery arrives. So let's have a look at the other part. I'm not sure whether to remove this panel because of all the screws being corroded on it. Right, I think I'll do that just to double check behind it just in case there's any more corrosion that we can't see for the moment. on that pad there but 
overall this looks in, this looks in pretty good shape right, let's get that a little bit of a clean while we're here yeah, there's a little bit of a mark on the on the pad there let's try a bit contact cleaner and a bit of paper on it well maybe slightly a little bit better but let's have a look at this this is a bit uh what i mean you know it is used in a tractor so All right i'm going to give this a bit of a clean and then i'll be back a few moments later All right it's a lot better isn't it you can see which button seems to get used the most right, let's get this back on I still need to try and figure out something to do with this emergency stop switch as well that's the way it goes so I don't know whether to put some super glue around it and then try and build it up with some hot glue or something maybe let's see if I can find some super glue right, back with some super glue which appears to be blocked I think let's see if I can find something to clear this hole with right let's give that a minute right well the super glue has got a, got a hold of it but what I'm thinking instead of the hot snot I'm going to use some of this Gorilla Glue that I've got and get it out of the tube because it's quite thick I'll we'll see if that'll reinforce it enough. Right, I'll try and get that somewhere flat. Just so it doesn't run everywhere. Right, we'll come back when that's dry. Right, it's been a couple of hours now and the glue's mainly set. I mean it's it's dry to the touch but it's still a bit squidgy so so I think what I'll do now, I'll start putting the control panel back on. So I'll just zoom out a little fraction. And just get this back in place. Alright, I think what we'll do, we'll just give it a quick test. We've still got to solder the battery in when it comes, but I just want to see if this actually powers up or anything first. So I'll just align the display up. That's it. Right, I'll plug this emergency stop in and we'll put some power under it. I'll just zoom out a fraction. I might make a couple of uh, a couple of spade connectors up just so we can plug it in straight to the power supply without holding the leads on. I'll just go do that one moment please. Right, back with a couple of wires that I've just hooked up with a bench power supply. So that's positive that's negative all right let's switch it on well that's it on but it's not drawing any current let's just check we've got power going to this connector here i'll just zoom down a little bit leads on the right way right so we've got 13 volts there and we still haven't got anything on the display let's just try this emergency stop and we still don't have anything We've got something here that looks like a voltage regulator, so let's just go on ground. We well, don't have anything going to there. I've just noticed the positive 
goes through a diode here and then through a resistor and then goes to this emergency stop so let's see do we get power to here yes power to here yes so we get power going to the emergency stop but we've got nothing coming out of it tell you what then, let's knock this power supply off a minute let's just see, now I don't know if this is supposed to be normally open or normally closed but it's currently open there it pressed in and it's still open let's double check my meat as working right, let's just so it looks like the emergency stop switch is faulty as well anyway, what can I just unplug this Let's get that out of there a second. Let's have a look at this. I can see signs of corrosion there as well. Just down here. So I think water's getting in this switch as well. Now how does this come off? There's this little... Ah, there we go, that seems to have done something. And you can see rust. Yeah, looks like there's rust in there as well. Now, I think this looks sealed. So I might have to order a one of these. But let's just see if we can get it apart, just to double check. No, actually comes apart quite easy. Yeah, I think that's the problem as well. well that's another problem. Yeah, that spring looks quite corroded in there as well, doesn't it? Oh. So this should be normally closed then because the contacts would be joining these two here yeah I think I might just order another one of these switches as well right so we're waiting for a battery and I'll order one of these switches and then we'll continue the video once those arrive it's been a few days and I've got all of the parts that I need now they've just all arrived so I think the first thing I'll do is change this battery so the glue is nicely set now as well so it looks like it's held them with a bit of silicon sealant here so let's try and remove that actually I just noticed there, I'll just zoom down The battery's actually broke away. It's actually rotted away from the terminal. Let's get my wire cut off and we'll just snip this bit off. Right, so let's remove this then. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux first. As these connections don't look the best. Especially that one. Yeah, I'm not even getting any heat through on that one. Let's try this side. There we go. Right, let's get a bit sold that way. Right, that hole's nice and clear. Let's see if we can do the same on the other side. Right. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a clean up just to get rid of the burnt flux. 
Right, we've we'll got the new battery out of its packet. Right. I'm just going to clean the back end of this board up as well. I'm not too sure about that hole there though, that looks a bit corroded, I'll just zoom down. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that via. Let's see what that looks like. That looks a bit better. I took a bit of the PCB mask off so I can flow the solar a little bit further back just in case the via wasn't making proper contact there. So. Nice. Let's just zoom back out a fraction. And the positive went towards the big chip. So pretty much like that. Yeah, so positive is just there and that's facing towards the, the big chip. And that one doesn't seem to want to solder very good, so we might have to do that one on the top. Just going to give that a little bit of a clean up. Yeah, that looks fine. Right, let's have a look at this switch now. Let's put the sport on one side. Tell you what, we'll just check that that battery's working. Let's grab the test meter a second. One little job out of the way. Right, let's have a look at this switch. So the one I've got is actually a three pin version. But what we want is just pins one and three because what we want it to be is normally closed until you actually press the switch so let's just double check yeah so that's normally closed and when you press the emergency stop it opens it so we can just cut pin number two off just cut it back a bit and then we just need to saw our two wires onto these ones. Let's see if we can get these two off. There we go. I'm just going to retin these. Because the solar's quite oxidised, that's on there. I'm just tin up these two pads, on these two legs. I'll just do the other one. Let's reassemble it then. And I'll see if I can put some hot glue or something on this battery just to hold it in place. Because I don't think I've got any silicone lying around. The only problem with silicone when you open a tube of it, unless you're using all of the tube immediately, it always seems to just go off let's check I'm getting this display and that back in properly right so that goes like that that goes like that right I'll put these screws back in right so Bend these legs over. So we'll fit in the case. And we'll connect up the bench power supply now and we'll just see if it springs into life. Right, let's pop the 
bench power supply on. Plus goes here. And negative goes there. Right, let's switch it on and see if it does anything. Yay! Right, I've got no idea how you operate this thing. But it seems to have sprung into life. So I'll put it back in the case and then we'll finish off the video. Alright, so it's just a lot easier to assemble it off camera while I had it on my knee because then I could screw the screws from the top. So it was just a lot easier, that was all. Right, I've just got it hooked up with the bench power supply. So we'll switch that on. And we'll just check that it all works. There we go. Presume that's how you end out. Is it escape? I mean, it's beeping, so the button's working. I've just got to leave it for so long. No, not this. Technician set up an operator set up is it's asking for a pin number. Well, I guess everything should be blanked because of the battery backup. these buttons are these working yeah let's just check out the beep so all the buttons and everything's working so I presume this is going to be a fix on this one then I mean obviously I can't test it because I haven't got the rest of the machine but it appears to be working on the face of it so right then if you enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions Please leave it in the comments section below and as always have a great day. Thanks for watching.